Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel Go Geeko. This is the part 3 of 3 part series to go from legacy classic ETL to modern cloud and big data. This specific part 3 is related to big data and what you need to learn and how you can make your way to modern cloud and big data technologies. All right, let's get started. I won't bore you anymore with this slide. So I'll just skip through again. This is mainly for anyone who works with data more of a data engineers do data cleansing data transformation or data analysis BAs data analysts testers. So this is a part three which is focused on big data and I hope you have watched my part one and part two because then this part will make way more sense. You're welcome to just watch this part if that's what you want to do. So I would start with this that big data data is not just Hadoop. Hadoop can be used for big data processing and storage along with other technologies uh, which are mostly cloud technologies like Azure Synapse, Azure or AWS Databricks and even there are many other. So just keep in mind big data doesn't just mean Hadoop but Hadoop is important in terms of big data and a lot of cloud technologies are replacing Hadoop in many cases but again Hadoop has its own market so I would like to cover some of the main products in Hadoop which you should know. First one is you should know a very high level Hadoop architecture this is a must. I put in a picture very high level there is HDFS there is a yarn which is a resource management on top of that you have processing engines like Spark or MapReduce so mostly people use Spark now and when we call MapReduce, it's really Hive SQL. There is another picture you can see. Hadoop cluster is a combination of many nodes or servers, and you won't go and log into each and every machine. So usually you log in through an edge node, and you can see your Hadoop cluster that way. And there are few HDFS commands. Those commands are almost same as uh, Unix commands or AWS CLI commands. Just be familiar with some of those commands because those are important. And again, these are very simple commands. So it will be an easy and quick transition, especially for ETL background resources because they know how Unix file system works. HDFS, which is a Hadoop distributed file system, also works in almost same ways. Just it has more capacity and more power behind it. Other thing which I have covered in my previous video also is Park and Snappy. Those are very important to know in terms of cloud because in cloud you have cost associated with storage and Park and Snappy compresses your data. Same is true for Hadoop also it actually gives better performance. So this is important and you should know about it. So just do a simple YouTube search about Park and Snappy and you will get thousands of great videos out there when it comes to YouTube searching this is true for any other topic which I am recommending here another thing which you must know is Hive as a ETL resource developer analyst or tester you already know Hive Hive is basically SQL in Hadoop and I would say not just Hadoop you can create Hive tables on top of AWS S3 so they are useful in cloud also things you need to know in Hive I have listed them here what are internal managed table versus external hive table what is a hive meta store which basically stores the metadata about hive tables like what is the table name where it's stored what's the directory under what database and all that hive ql is nothing but same as sql on hive you should know what is partitioning in hive if you know partitioning in oracle it's basically the same concept you should know how to create simple create statements for hive how to create part Parquet snappy tables and why do create park and snappy I have actually put in few quick examples just to show you how easy it is to create these hive tables which are stored as parquet or or parquet along with the compression as snappy you can refer these examples other thing which is good to know is scoop even though a lot of people may go with some kind of a ETL tool or drag and drop tool but scoop is also relevant so it's good to know basically these are simple import export 
commands to export data from outside HDFS into HDFS and vice versa. And when I say outside HDFS, it could be a relational database. It supports many relational databases. Other good thing which you should know is Hue interface. It's mainly for running Hive queries and check results there. Here is a simple interface. There is a query they have written. You can see the results down on top. There is a file browser and a job browser. So job browser, basically you can check your jobs which are running. File browser, you can go and check your file directories. You don't need to do LS and CD. So you can just use this interface to go from one directory to other directory, which makes things a little simpler. But if you are comfortable with HDFS commands, then you can always use HDFS commands also to look into your directories. Learning about Hue interface have double benefits because Hue-like interface is also AWS Athena's interface. As you can see in this slide, this is an Athena interface, which is nothing but querying files on S3 in AWS. This is almost similar interface. So once you learn Hue, you kind of know AWS Athena as well. Now, Spark is probably the main thing which you really need to know when it comes to big data because Spark is not just Hadoop. Spark is used behind Databricks, which is very powerful. You don't need a Hadoop cluster. If you use Databricks, it will automatically scale more EC2 machines in AWS and similarly in Azure. So what things you need to know in Spark. You need to know high level architecture and terminology of Spark. What are executor, cores, memory, and how they are related when it comes to Spark. What is a data frame? It basically is like a temp table, but it does not have data. Think of it as a view. So when you execute the query, then only it gets the data. That's basically a data frame is, even though you can persist data in data frame also. What is a lazy evaluation in Spark? When to persist data in memory and when not? to spark is really good with memory but sometimes it can be bad with memory too because you may see a lot of uh, memory issues you should know what's a spark submit command basically that's how you run a spark job using spark submit you need to know common memory parameters and settings you should know common spark issues and resolutions again you if you do a simple youtube search or a google search on any of these topics you will learn so much but these are the topics you should know. Here's a simple diagram I have provided. Basically, there is a driver machine and that creates a lot of executors to run your job in parallel. Under executors, you have empty slots and as soon as the work is allocated, these slots get filled with the task and the tasks gets executed by the executor. Every executor has its own memory and cores and those things play a huge role when it comes to Spark processing. Another important thing especially people coming from ETL tool background like Informatica BDM or Talend if you know drag and drop tools like Informatica BDM that really gives you an advantage because you get to know about Hive and big data related issues and BDM is really easy to learn as I have described in my last video that if you know IDQ you almost know BDM so learning curve for BDM is very small also it covers almost 90% of data transformation standardization or data wrangling use cases I would also say Python what you really need to know in Python is basics functional programming something like Unix scripting which you may have already done if you can just figure out a simple use case to read write data and transform data from files through some RDBMS that is good enough as you will go into this field you will learn some advanced things but to get into big data simple loops and error handling these are some of the things which you should know another important point is what's the general flow of python code how the data is flowing like if you look at your etl mapping you know how the data is flowing from first transformation to the next to the next similarly you should always know how your data is flowing through the code 
again i have put in these slides which i have already covered in my last video you need to know that how data usually flows in big data and cloud again this is the same slide as in my last video data moves from one zone to the other zone and every zone has its own specific purpose this is same as my last video also but i wanted to emphasize how you need to learn go online because everything is free start searching on youtube or google simple youtube searches like spark memory tutorial spark common issues idq tutorial also check out my channel go Geeko. i have a lot of topics already out there and i'll be putting more so do subscribe so that you're notified and you can be up to date with my content Content. recommended certification for big data is big data specialty certification it's good to have it's not really must you should not attempt this as your first certification you should do the other certifications which are cloud practitioner azure fundamentals uh, which i have provided in my last video and then you can attempt for this big data specialty certification and how can you get into cloud and big data again just 15 to 30 minutes every single day right just do it five days Days a week that's good enough take some proactive measures some extra responsibility in your current job if you get a chance that will be great learn idq or bdm then it will be a easy ride for you use this presentation and my last video presentation to come up with this topic list data is the new oil so start digging start searching and learn those topics champion them look for cloud and big data opportunities once you know all these topics all the interviews will be around these topics there is already a shortage of cloud people so even if you know 80 90 percent of what i have described you are good you're golden with that i want to thank you once again for watching my videos and if you have time then join me in my next tutorial thanks everyone bye now